Okay, so we are going to do the Wingate anaerobic power test, or the WANT test. Remember, this is a test completely to determine um, the ability of the ATP and the PCR systems to generate anaerobic power. It's a 30 second all out bout of work to fully send you into an anaerobic work zone and to completely fatigue your muscles. Um, we can use this to determine a lot of different things. We can get peak power, we can get relative peak power, anaerobic capacity, and then we can look at the anaerobic fatigue factor to be able to determine you know, how much power an athlete can generate. So this is a test that's commonly done in football, in rugby, and then in like powerlifting sports. Now, because it's a 30 second all out belt, what we have to do is we have to have a weight limit or a resistance that we're going to put on Mike here that's going to send him into a completely anaerobic work zone for that all out 30 second bout. Now, the resistance is based off of 7.5% of his body weight. So he's 123.6 kilograms. So 0 0.075 times 123.6. Is 9.3 kilograms. We are, that's this on the weight sack now. 9.3 kilograms of resistance. He's going to be pedaling against all out as hard as he can go. So this is tough, okay? That's the whole point of it. Now, things that we have to remember when we're doing it. We're using a Monarch testing bike, right? So the distance of the flywheel is 6.12 meters exactly, okay? But oftentimes, remember how we talked about this in class, we just do six to make it easier for us to do the math or anything, okay? So you're gonna get little bit different um, differences depending on if you just use six or use the more accurate 6.12. Now, as I said, it's a 30 second all out test, but we use different time courses along with 30 seconds to be able to generate some of these different variables. So during the test, what we're going to have Mike do is, Miss Freddie's gonna pull the weight off of the flywheel, not yet though. Um, we're gonna let him come out of the saddle and he's basically gonna gear up. We've already given him a five to 10 minute warm up, so his body's warm and he's ready for this test. He's gonna come up onto the saddle with no resistance. We're gonna give him about three to five seconds to pedal as hard and fast as he can, more or less to get up and go, okay? And then on my cue, she's gonna drop that weight and it's gonna be boom, I got a lot of resistance on me and it's gonna, it's gonna feel like he's getting his bottom kicked right away. And he is gonna stay and he's gonna keep pushing, 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 pushing. So by the end of this 30 seconds, you know, he's gonna have a very difficult time trying to get those legs up and around, okay? Now, to be able to figure out some of these things, we're going to pay attention to the time courses in five seconds. So Amanda is going to be um, counting each time his toe goes down to look at the number of revolutions in the first five seconds. These two over here are going to be in charge of counting the number of revolutions for the whole 30 seconds. Now you can do this a lot of different ways depending on how much information you want to know. Sometimes we just calculate the total amount of work in, in the first five seconds to get the highest amount of work and then the total amount of work. We can actually also do this test, so we do the first five seconds, the last five seconds, and then the whole amount. And that's what we're going to do too. So Amanda's got the job of first five and last five. Now, in the strength and conditioning world though, typically they look at the entire bout and they break each one up into five second bouts. That way they can look at truly how much fatigue is occurring from that maximal peak power that they generated all the way down to the lowest power and how that's changing and fluctuating because they can get more ideas about um, where to train and what to do with an athlete based on those. But for what we're doing here today in class, we're going to look at first five seconds, last five seconds, and then total work over the 30 seconds. So, are you ready, Mike? Do you have any questions? Yes. Uh, do I start counting the, like, without the weight? Is that part of the Not until I say go. Okay. I didn't yes. Know that was part of and then I'll tell, I'll call out it. five seconds, <laughs> and that's when you'll stop, okay? And then I'll call out 25 seconds, and you'll start again, okay? And you guys, from start to finish, are counting each time your foot goes down over here. Are we ready? Lots of encouragement. Lots of encouragement here. Okay, so. 
Go ahead, come up out of the saddle and start pedaling as hard and fast as you can. Start to generate that power. Ready? One, two, three, go. Everything you got, come oh, on. Okay, 
so similar to up here then, we're going to have to take this on a time course, right? So 30 seconds is half a minute. So we're going to divide that by 0.5. What do we get? 5,245 Okay? And that same here is going to be kilograms per meters per minute. Okay, so the same thing. We're going to take this 5,245 and divide it by the distance of a flywheel. 8.4.2. Okay, so it's anaerobic capacity over that entire duration of the test is 874 watts. Okay? Now, we can calculate the anaerobic fatigue, so it tells us more or less from his highest workload to his lowest a workload, how much difference was there, okay, and how much fatigue was present during the whole test. So to be able to do that, we know what his peak power is here, okay, this 100, 116 watts, 1,116 watts. Now we have to figure it out for that last five seconds. So we're going to do the exact same thing here for the last five seconds. So we're going to take our 9.3 times our 6 times our 6 for our flywheel resistance, and what do we get? 334.8. So 335. Now this is another 5 second bout, so we have to divide it by that 0 0.0833. Four thousand. training. 